USA, 1937. American electrical engineer John Atanasov leaps through the monograph Solution of Linear Differential and Integral Equations by Kyiv Polytechnic Professor Mikhailo Kravchuk. The Ukrainian mathematician offered unique methods that simplified calculations and, for the first time, allowed for their automation. Tanasov was one step away from developing the world's first electronic computer. He wanted to explore the ingenious solutions of the Ukrainian as much as possible. The Ukrainian, who will later be called the luminary of world mathematics, one of the pioneers in designing computers. Indeed, thanks to Kravchuk's scientific discoveries, the computer, television, and 3D modeling will become a reality. My love is Ukraine and mathematics. 1901. A nine-year-old boy enters the library of the Lutsk All Boys High School for the first time. He had never seen so many textbooks. The boy's name was Mikhailo. He and his family moved to the city from his native village of Chovnitsia in Volin. His parents, Philip and Adelfina Kravchuk, were not wealthy, but literate persons. There were four children in the family. Father worked, and mother was engaged in raising children. Mikhailo Kravchuk was the third child in the family. There were always many other children in the house. The mother took care of all the children. She promoted love of nature for them. Their village was very picturesque. Mathematical texts especially attracted the young fellow. Most of them were in foreign languages, but this was not a problem for the talented boy. Mikhailo's mother was an ethnic German. She was a very erudite and educated woman. She knew world literature, played the piano, and that's how she raised her children. Italian, Polish, French, German, well, Ukrainian, Russian, Mikhailo knew six languages. Mikhailo Kravchuk was one of the best high school students. Kravchuk graduated from the high school with a gold medal and in 1910 got into the Faculty of Physics and Mathematics at Kiev University of St. Voldemort. After the first examination session, the guy was exempted from tuition fees and given a scholarship of 50 rubles. Mikhailo's teachers were well-known mathematicians, Professors Vassil Yermakov, Boris Bukharev, and Dmitro Grav. In 1914, Mikhailo Kravchuk graduated with honors from Kiev University of St. Valdemar, first degree diploma. Then Dmitro Grave offered him to stay at the university for the professorship. Grave was extremely proud of his student. However, at a crucial moment in his student's life, he played a disastrous role for the Ukrainian mathematical genius. In 1917, Kravchuk obtained a master's degree and began his teaching career. At that time, he became a member of the Ukrainian Scientific Society. During the first year of university studies, he realized that language is the basis of science. Kravchuk dreamed that mathematics sounded Ukrainian. While studying at the university, he began to create Ukrainian scientific mathematical terminology on his own. He spoke about Ukraine. Ukrainian language. He said that the language is needed, that it should be independent, and the Russian authorities did not like it. At the time, it was impossible to find a textbook on mathematics in Ukrainian in high schools, colleges, and university. At that time, there was no Ukrainian terminology at all. Lviv mathematicians helped him. They knew the Ukrainian language well and helped Kravchuk compile the dictionary. As a result, in 1920, the first publication of the three-volume Ukrainian language dictionary was approved. Mikhailo Kravchuk became one of the organizers of the Ukrainian People's University. He started the first two Ukrainian high schools. He conducted the first mathematical Olympiad among schoolchildren in Ukraine. He sought to spread mathematical knowledge among young people and taught at several institutions at once. He began teaching students at KPI in 1921. Later, he became the head of the Department of Higher Mathematics. There are teachers' houses on the territory of KPI between the first building and the third chemical building. 
According to archival documents, Mikhailo Kravchuk lived in an apartment 29 in the teacher's house, which is closer to the first building. It was in this apartment that Arkhip Lyika and Sergei Korolev lived, and Kiev mathematicians came here for their meetings. Mikhailo Kravchuk managed to create his own scientific mathematics school at the Kiev Polytechnic Institute. Mikhailo Kravchuk's students remembered. His lectures were a special form of art. Students admired both the beauty of his mathematical thought and his teaching manners. He held the chalk with only two fingers, thumb and forefinger. He walked slowly, smoothly, from the right to the left edge of the board. Then he threw back his right leg, described a semicircle, and the listeners could not even notice how theatrically Kravchuk found himself again on the right edge of the board. He delivered lectures like a true artist. He taught in the first building. That's a physical, large physical lecture hall. He had the most students at his lectures. The majority attended Kravchuk's lectures. The lectures were not in Russian, which was usual for that time, but in Ukrainian. He was one of the first to deliver lectures in Ukrainian, and everyone, even the philologists from the university, came to listen to Kravchuk's speech. He was called the creator of the music of numbers and the titan of mathematical thought. He lived and burned with love for his mathematics. Undoubtedly, Kravchuk was not only a great mathematician, but also a true teacher. He possessed the gift of God to find talents, to develop them. For example, he invited a third grader to solve problems in the fifth grade. Such a method probably stimulated both little Arkhip and older children. This is how the daughter of the prominent KPI student Arkhip Lyulka, whom Kravchuk taught, remembered Mikhailo Kravchuk. Lyulka's daughter was present at the inauguration of the memorial to Kravchuk right here on the Walk of Fame. She remembered that a portrait of Mikhail Kravchuk always hung in their apartment. Mikhailo Kravchuk met a boy named Arkhup in the Bugoslav region, in the village of Savarka. Kravchuk taught there and later became the director of the school. He was very fond of teaching children, wrote textbooks for them, and the children he taught there all successfully entered various universities, institutes, higher education institutes of Ukraine. It was the way of talented Arkhup Lyulka a gifted schoolboy, Kravchuk's student became interested in aviation and entered Kiev Polytechnic and became the creator of the first turbojet engines. It was the way of Sergei Korolev, the outstanding engineer, the author of the first artificial earth satellite, also studied under Mikhailo Kravchuk. Kravchuk gave entrance exams for Korolev. Korolev graduated from a vocational school and couldn't enter the institute. However, Kravchuk talked to him gave him problems on trigonometry and understood this individual must continue his studies. At the age of 37, Kravchuk became a member of the Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. Later, he was one of the founders of the National Institute of Mathematics. At the same time, he began to develop the method of moments. He had two monographs, two comprehensive monographs on the method of moments for solving differential and integral equations, two volumes, and these two volumes were translated into English and published in the USA. Thanks to Kravchuk, the mathematical school and the algebraic school rose to world level in the early 1930s. He saw further, wider, and deeper than his contemporaries. The prospect of in-depth development was clearly visible behind his ideas and discoveries he wrote in the 1930s. We have the right and reason to hope in the near future for such scientific and mathematical personnel who will make our mathematical school a center of world significance. Brutal repressions began. It was a purposeful genocide of the Ukrainian nation. The Soviet authorities fabricated cases and demonstrably tried writers, priests, teachers, and doctors. Information appeared in the newspapers. Mikhailo Kravchuk will be prosecuted in the case against the Union for the Liberation of Ukraine. Well, he cited illness and refused because his friends were members of the Union. Friends with whom? People with whom he communicated. And he could not afford such a thing, although he knew that it would start bullying him. 
He could escape from the regime abroad because Kravchuk's unique teaching style and mathematical talent were known far beyond the borders of Ukraine. During his travels, he met many famous world mathematicians who often invited him to visit them. He maintained correspondence with them, letters. Hadamard wrote him a letter in which he thanked Kravchuk for the works he sent him. He wrote, everything seems so simple in your works. Only a genius can do it. And no matter what may happen to you, your name will remain on the tablets of mathematical science. There were cases when he was offered to relocate. He refused. He wanted to serve Ukraine. He had many works, over 180 works. Most of them were in Ukrainian. Some were in a foreign language. Scientific achievements did not protect Kravchuk. He had many friends and scientists abroad, so he was accused of espionage and bourgeoisie nationalism. The Soviet authorities recalled his support of the Ukrainian theater. Participation in the Shevchenko Scientific Society. The harassment began. Shortly before 1938, there was a long article in the Communist magazine about the fact that Kravchuk was a member of the Ukrainian Union for the Liberation of Ukraine, that he was not a reliable person for the Soviet authorities. The authors condemned Mikhailo Kravchuk for his ties with unreliable mathematicians. Kravchuk always maintained very close ties with these enemies of the people. After all, he is the co-author of several books together with these vile fascist squarables, was written in the article. However, Kravchuk was not so much shocked by the article itself as by the first signature at the end. It belonged to his teacher, Dmitry Grave. Determined the fate of Kravchuk, made Kolima for Kravchuk and helped get him to Kolima. Kravchuk was sentenced to 20 years in prison and five years in exile on a trumped-up case. Participation in a nationalist organization. The last word in court. Kravchuk understood that there was no point in telling anything. He just said, let me just finish my work there. The only ones who dared to help the mathematical genius, Kipiaishniks. KPI has always distinguished itself from others. The KPI community has high moral factors, humanity, and decency. These features show themselves precisely in 1937 to 1938, when the harassment of Kravchuk began. It was the community and mathematicians of KPI, KPI students who came to Kravchuk's defense. They wrote a letter to the NKVD authorities. It was a brave deed. A newcomer to the Maldiak camp in Kalima was immediately appointed as a digger at the mine. A person who was used to working on science here and they gave him a shovel ordered to dig the earth to dig stone. Despite the abuse of guards, hard physical work and inflammation of the myocardium, mathematician Kravchuk perfected his 20 year scientific work in hunger and cold. In a letter to his relatives, he wrote, I made a great mathematical discovery in which I worked for 20 years. It is still unknown what he talked about. On March 9, 1942, detainee 238943, academician Mikhailo Kravchuk died. The Russians stole the notebook with his calculations. We asked Russian mathematicians, maybe you will succeed in finding Kravchuk's materials. They would be unique. However, they said no, no. Years later, Mikhailo Kravchuk's name was found second on the list of Ukrainians for immediate elimination. The verdict was signed by the Trinity in the last resort. Stalin, Molotov, and Zhdanov signed the sentence. At the beginning of Khrushchev's defrosting, the case of Mikhailo Kravchuk was reviewed. He was completely rehabilitated because there was no crime. No crime. Where could it result from? However, Kravchuk's name was passed over in silence for a long time. When I was a graduate student or already finished graduate or already finishing graduate school at the Institute of Mathematics, I did not hear Kravchuk's name. There were talks about Kravchuk, but we didn't know who and what Kravchuk was. Everything was eliminated. 
there was nothing. Only in 1967 to 1968, the first publications about Kravchuk appear. Nikola Sorokas brochure, The Poet of the Silent Number, articles by Nina Verchenko and Viktor Dobrovalsky. Kiev Polytechnics deeply respect Mikhailo Kravchuk, first of all, because he was an outstanding mathematician, working as the head of the Department of Higher Mathematics. Mikhailo Kravchuk found a number of outstanding mathematical solutions, for example, the famous Kravchuk series, which were used by the designers of the first electronic computing machines to develop first computers to automate calculations. Mikhailo Kravchuk was also an outstanding teacher. Former KPI student Sergei Korolev, Arakub Liulka, Lev Leolev, and many, many other outstanding personalities were Kravchuk's students, later thanks to thorough math mathematical training. They became outstanding designers, scientists of the last century. Finally, Mikhailo Kravchuk was an outstanding great Ukrainian, an outstanding patriot of Ukraine. Mikhailo Kravchuk actually paid for it with his life. Kravchuk's name returned to the Ukrainian scientific pantheon. In 1992, the Academy of Sciences of Ukraine posthumously reinstated the outstanding scientist as Academy's member. In 2002, UNESCO put him in the list of the best mathematicians in the world. We live in the era of mathematical modeling. The analysis of 3D models is based on Kravchuk's works. The first Soviet national Ukrainian computers. Archaeologists use work related to the analysis of ancient writing to decipher it. The Japanese use Kravchuk's works in the development of television and antenna systems. We can say that Kravchuk, with his activities, was ahead of his time by almost a hundred years. Kiev Polytechnics honor their outstanding teacher. In 2003, a monument to Mikhailo Kravchuk was erected. His portrait is placed in the alley of Kiev Polytechnics. With, his recognition of with this recognition of Mikhailo Kravchuk, we try to educate the current generation of young people. In the system of values that our outstanding teacher and scientist Mikhailo Kravchuk professed in his time. He lived and burned with immeasurable love for Ukraine and for mathematics. All his short life he worked tirelessly, inspired and creatively for the benefit of science and education of his native people. My love is Ukraine and mathematics. That was his motto.